back to the channel of nonsense today, I want to talk a little bit about the subject of loss. Loss, we usually think, is a bad thing. But if you've ever lost your child in a supermarket for half an hour, you suddenly appreciate its nighttime screaming fits a little bit more. If you've ever lost an overbearing girlfriend or boyfriend, you suddenly realise you're able to stay up till 3am in your pants playing cyberpunk. You never used to be able to do that. The Audi R8, the Audi R8, has lost its four-wheel drive system so did we gain anything in return? That's today's big question, and I'm gonna try and answer it for you. Let's get going. Yes, this is the rear-wheel drive Audi R8, and there's some pretty significant things about it. It's the first rear-wheel drive production series Audi since probably before I was born, and I'm, look at me, really old, haggard, and bald. I know there was a limited edition rear-wheel series one in 2017, but that was limited edition. This is just a car you can go into your Audi dealer and buy right now for £115,000, which makes it the cheapest R8 you can buy and the cheapest V10 engined car you can buy in 2021. It's kind of like a Bogo R8, it's plain Jane. This is a press car and you've got two options on it and that's a different style of wheels and a Bang & Olufsen stereo. So this is 120 grand right here, right now. I'll talk you around it and show you why it might just be the purest R8 you can buy. The rear-wheel drive Audi R8 is based on the latest version of the R8, which was facelifted in 2019 to help it meet European emissions regulations, which means it doesn't pop and bang anywhere like as much as it used to, which is a real shame. And it got these black slats across the front to help it look like an old rally car. It's really, really quite simple, this rear-wheel drive one. You can only get it with steel brakes, no carbon ceramics, and this one is so low spec, doesn't even have carbon fiber or body color side blades on it. And it's only available with passive normal suspension. It's none of this fancy adaptive damper stuff. So what you get from the suspension is what you get. Still, it's a pretty looking thing. It's worth noting that the R8 is built on the same production line as the GT3 version, the race car version of the R8. And Audi says they share something like 50% of components. Now, I would argue this rear wheel drive one is most like the racing one because it's got a lower power engine and because it's rear wheel drive, just like the race car. So it's aluminium apart from a bit kind of behind the bulkhead here, which is carbon fiber reinforced plastic for weight saving and mass centralization. So you could say, if you buy one of these, you've got the R8 that's closest to the race car. Right, let's check out the engine. The rear wheel drive R8 might have lost its front differential clutch pack and drive shafts, and the 5.2 litre V10 has been detuned to 540 horsepower rather than 620. But my God, it's still an absolute beaut of an engine. It revs to 8,700 RPM. It's just unlike anything else on the market at the moment. Naturally aspirated, of course. It howls, it's brilliant, and it's got 540 newton meters of torque, which is a handy amount to have. It's still really fast, 3.7 to 62, and it'll go on to 201 miles an hour. I don't think when you drive it, you really miss those 80 horsepower. But hey, the attention to detail is quite cool. You've got little lights here. So when you unlock the car, the whole engine bay is illuminated. Press cars usually have like a six, seven grand carbon pack in the engine bay. There's not an ounce of carbon on this car. And I think it's kind of better for it. It's really clean. This V10 badge, something quite cool about that, that reflects in this glass, which then reflects in the rear view mirror. So when you're driving it, that V10 badge, she says, hitting his head, is the right way up. How cool is that? And it's got a metal oil filler cap. Now, before we go and drive it, I just want to show you the interior quickly because it's reasonably interesting, vaguely. And I think we've got a special guest in there. I wonder who it could be. The R8's interior is like an old comfy slipper, but it is a slipper that's getting a bit old and you might want a new pair next Christmas because it's been the same since 2015, 2016, really. That's not to say it's bad. You've got a digital cockpit. This has no interior options other than the Bang & Olufsen Hi-Fi, which is probably just an admission by the press department that the standard Hi-Fi is not great. And it's just super clean, super simple. Everything is done through the driver's display. There's no entertainment screen here. You've got a little RWD plaque here to say you're in the real-wheel drive one, so don't turn traction control off. The entertainment is controlled using a little wheel and it's dead simple. No touchscreens, hallelujah. There's a few blank buttons because we've got no options. 
seats, they're comfy, they look pretty bland to be honest, but hey, they do the job well and they're fluffy Alcantara and you've got a little shelf on the back. You've got the button for the front here which opens up uh, some storage, the size of which is here. It's quite a decent space to be honest, I've got tripods and everything in there. It's all normal USBs, no USB-Cs and you've got the little digital screens for heating and everything which are quite pretty. Now the R8 has got a bit of a reputation, let's be honest, as being the practical supercar. And it's true, there's Isofix on the passenger seat so you can take your kids safely to nursery in your bright yellow R8. I'm joined today by, well not my daughter, but Abusive Bunny is back. Why didn't you just buy a Lamborghini Huracan? Because I'm not an influencer and I don't earn that much money. Go away. Yeah, I like it in here. Enough waffling. Let's go for a drive. Right, let's go for a drive. Apologies if the audio is a bit sketchy. My backup microphone is not working, but the one the camera is. You start the car with the big red button. And it makes quite a boomy noise in here. And it beeps at you to tell you that it's on. I'm reversing. Reversing camera pops up in the display. If you've never driven an R8, I would say it is by far, possibly apart from the McLaren 720S, the easiest car just to poodle around in. Visibility is really good. Out the sides, out the front, does beat a little bit. And it doesn't feel outrageously wide. Now, I'm on passive suspension, as I said earlier. It's stiff-ish, but it's not outrageous. It's got really good quality damping. I'm on a really bumpy track here, and I can feel it, but it's not jarring, and it's not annoying. Steering wheel, flat bottom, everything's easy. You've got normal indicators, none of that Ferrari nonsense with buttons on the steering wheel. Big mirrors, you can see the haunches of the car at the back in the door mirrors, which is really cool, isn't it? Let's be honest. And yeah, let's see how it drives. Am I going to notice the horsepower deficit? Am I going to notice the rear wheel drive? Am I going to notice the 65 kilo weight saving over the four wheel drive version? 1600 kilo car this so it's not a featherweight right let's go immediately traction control raining in the torque <laughs> yeah it's still quick i mean with an engine this torquey that revs to 8700 rpm by the time you've got to the top of second gear and made a lovely noise you're breaking the speed limit so just bear that in mind Oh yeah, when you're driving at like eight tenths, it does just flow down the road really, really nicely. The steering, the steering does feel different to the four wheel drive one. It feels a bit more immediate and a bit more natural. It's not exactly, you don't feel anything through it, but it just get, I don't know, it's a more pleasing sensation when you turn into corners. In the mid range, you don't notice the rear wheel drive third gear out for corner a little bit more rear push possibly but bear in mind the four-wheel drive system on the standard r8 is quite rear biased anyway and that does little dainty four-wheel drifts out of corners the only little slides i've had in this were kind of not that expected and it was kind of out of every wet roundabout the traction control caught them nipped them in the bud but yeah, you do need to be aware that this is a rear-wheel drive car with the engine behind you. So when it does kick out, it does go reasonably quickly. Obviously, stability control looks after you. If you press it once and put it in sport mode, it does allow a little bit of a slide before tidying it up. Right, about to get out onto my twisty road and I'll put it in dynamic, which obviously on this car just sharpens the throttle response and makes the exhaust noisier doesn't do anything to the suspension. All right, using the paddles. The paddles are a bit crap. They're plastic. They're the same as in every other automatic Volkswagen Group car. You don't get special paddles in an R8, which is a real pity. And I think there's people on the internet make a lot of money selling aftermarket ones. Right. Second gear, 30 miles an hour, going into a 60. Let's see how fast it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's way, way beyond 60. Got quite a squirm on there, even with the traction control fully on. So 
this isn't a car for brain dead influencers because it will bite you you get the sense that it is a bit edgy these roads are super greasy I'll put the traction control into sport just to see if it changes the way it feels out the corner but I'm being careful these roads are wet muddy and this yeah you need to be on your game put it that way really do miss the old pops and bangs on the downshifts the facelift the WLTP version really did kill any of the excitement from the exhaust but you still get great V10 noise over your head which is always special yeah the torque is really impressive the top end of this you don't really notice the 80 horsepower that aren't there it still revs as high I think still sounds amazing yeah I'm gonna go back and do that road again no. Woohoo! <laughs> right, yeah, it does obviously feel more real wheel drive. But I'm not getting enough through the steering or anything else really to feel massively confident pushing it. I kind of feel like the rear wheel drive was a response to a question no one was asking. I know there are people on the internet that say rear wheel drive makes everything better. I'm not so sure, but it is cheaper. And if you live somewhere dry and sunny, this could be the R8 for you. A mixed bag then, the rear wheel drive R8 in terms of driving. Back to you, Tim, for an outro. So what do we think of the rear wheel drive Audi R8 then? Well, the thing that strikes me most about it is kind of what a bargain it is. I know 120 grand is tons of money, but that's the same price as a normal 911 Carrera S with some options on it. Everything's got more expensive, but I'd have a V10 over the Porsche. The driving experience of the rear wheel drive in the wet, I would rather have the four wheel drive R8 to be honest, because I'm no driving hero and this is a little bit spiky. You sense the traction control working over time, and if you put it in sport mode, then you need to be on your game. But although it's challenging to drive, it's not the most engaging car to drive. The R8 kind of never has been, but it's still a hoot. The engine is amazing. And well, the yellow paint doesn't cost anything. That's how much of a bargain this is, in a way. So yeah, I love it. The R8 is still a brilliant, brilliant car. And if you've got 120 grand, and you're looking at a 911 Carrera S, listen to one of these first. That's all I'll say. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please like, please comment, please subscribe if you've enjoyed my nonsense. I'll see you next time. Oh, and don't forget to hit my bell. I really like it when you do that.